Film music is, is something of the wayward child of opera, really. The first uh, film composers were opera composers. And, um, but I think if, if there's any one composer who's the father of film music, you'd have to say Korngold was. And he certainly brought his operatic tradition to film music. What happened over the years is that, you know, in terms of grand spectacle, film essentially eclipsed opera. And I think that there is ground to be reclaimed in opera. It wasn't until I started working in film music in earnest that I really felt that I became attuned to the, to the relationship between drama and music. Essentially in film, the dialogue takes the place of the vocal line of the singer. And so uh, film music done properly uh, is really a counterpoint between dialogue and the music. And, and one shouldn't really exist without the other. Whereas in opera, of course, you're providing both the dialogue line and the music. So um, as I did more and more film music, it, it seemed to me that the, the place to take it further is to expand into opera. And, you know, as an artist, opera is the, the ultimate statement it, because it embraces all of the arts, you know, the visual arts, dance, uh, poetry, um, and drama, and of course music. Uh, and in music, it embraces, um, you know, choir, so, you know, soloists, full orchestra, um, and within full orchestra, of course, chamber combinations. I've written an oratorio prior to this in several several um, vocal works, as well as I'd, I'd done quite a bit of choir work in my uh, film, music, film scores. But this is the first, my first opera, but you know, it was 20 years in the making. I mean, uh, I had the idea of an opera that begins on, on let's, see, let's say, uh, Juan Perón's balcony, you know, quite a while ago. From a purely theatrical point of view, um, which also lent itself well to a portrayal of Latin American history was the idea of having a riot in which um, uh, dancers in choir uh, could, could, you know, essentially perform a ballet. And the riot leads, logically, I think, to suppression of the people by the military machine, which I thought uh, when I when that came to me, I thought I could I can make that into a grand operatic moment. My approach was to to concentrate on the drama, and uh, as such, drama I think if there's if there's a compelling story, it will allow the audience to go into musical regions that they may not they may be reluctant to go if it's simply if it's merely a concert piece. The way I, I approach all of my work is that I, I look for, I, I, I take an overview of the existing repertoire and then I look for a place that I can, that I can contribute to it in a place where uh, there might be um, something missing in the repertoire that I can actually fulfill rather than just you know, take up the space of yet another opera. Um, and what I saw, what I felt that I saw amongst other new operas was that there was a definite um, there is a definite consideration of musical interests to the detriment, often, of the dramatic interests. And I really felt that, especially uh, having had a, a background in film music, I felt that a greater integration of music and drama could be achieved. And that's what I attempted to, to achieve with Rio de Sangre. The difference between writing a film, writing an opera, even though both mediums are intensely collaborative, uh, composers in film music, and even more and more now, are kind of relegated to the position of, of expressing what the director wants to express, whereas opera is truly a composer's medium. And the other big advantage for me uh, is that salsa music really has not changed significantly in the last 60 or 70 years. Um, such that uh, 
one could place this opera in the present day and one would hear merengue music or they could place it in 1950 and you would hear merengue music. And so the source music then didn't limit any particular director from placing Rio de Sangre in a specific time frame or a non-specific time frame, which Paula, uh, Paula Swazi is looking for, something a little more um, nebulous than, oh, that's 1964 or something like that. And uh, so I, I felt pretty lucky to, to have discovered this combination of elements that I thought I could really, I could really contribute to in Rio de Sangre. Mm -hmm.